Hello and welcome to this little video about what for me uh, was the or was my favourite ever uh, Formula One season, 1986. Uh, and I'm going to be going through this yearbook. It says 1987 because of because of course it's um it was written in 1987. But it is about the 1986 season. And I got this uh, from my parents. But probably Christmas 1986, maybe, actually, if it was written just before 1987, but they call it 1987. I don't know, basically, but it was it was around that time. And I see the price on the inside, £18.95. It's quite extreme for 34, 35 years ago. I've had it all this time. It's falling apart a little bit. <laughs> Um, I'll have to patch that up. Introduction by Bernie Ecclestone. That's how the championship finished. Amazing championship that year. Uh, between four drivers. With two rounds to go, there were still four drivers that could win it. In the final round, there were three drivers that could win it. I remember staying up um, to watch it, or, or getting up. I think I got up, not stayed up, because the race would have been about, started about 3, 3, 3.30 in the morning uh, in Australia. Nowadays, they start the race a little bit later in Australia, so it's not such an early start for the main audience in Europe. Mansell's famous tyre blowout, 16 laps from the end, which stopped him winning the championship. I remember it well. And um, it's well known that had he not controlled the car so well when he did crash um, if he had stayed on the circuit in a wrecked car then they would have taken the chap the uh, race standings as they were at the end of the previous lap when Mansell was still in the race so Mansell would have been world champion had he not controlled the car so well and managed to get it off the racing track that's a bit galling for him Alan Pross, what a beautiful car that is. I absolutely love that. At the time, I was fully supporting Mansell. But that car truly is a gorgeous car, I think. If only Formula One cars looked like that now without having lots of bits all over them. Although that should <clears throat> be reduced uh, from next year. Nigel Mansell, so near yet so far. Poor old Nigel. Although he only really had, um, you know, proper uh, bad luck in that last race. Other drivers had bad luck throughout the year as well. So, 1987 uh, bothers me more so uh, to this day, because in 1987. He had bad luck from the first race all the way through to qualifying in the penultimate race when he broke his broke his uh, neck or back. I think he broke his back. Did he break his back or his neck? One of them. It's pretty serious anyway. Uh, it's just bad luck all year long. If he didn't get bad luck in a race, he won the race. And his teammate finished second. Nelson Piquet. However... In all the races where Mansell retired, 
PK would come through from second place to win the race. So, um, much like um, it has to be said, Nico Rosberg in 2016, PK pretty much inherited the championship through bad luck from his teammate. Frank Williams. He had his big accident that year. He's been in a wheelchair ever since. Nelson PK. Nigel Mansell, Red 5. Williams won the Constructors' Championship. And McLaren took the most important one, really, the Drivers' Championship. I think it's even more important to the team for sponsorship and um, worldwide acknowledgement. It's better, I think, to have... The teams prefer to have their world champion driver as opposed to the their own team being champions. McLaren would have certainly got more press due, due to Prost winning the championship in their car, more so than Williams would have got for winning the Constructors' Championship. And it's all about visibility. Visibility gets you money. Stefan Johansson. I'll tell you, Stefan Johansson, he, out of all the Formula One drivers I've ever heard speak, he was the one that was most ASMR-ish. If you ever get to see the video of him commenting on his race in the 1985 Canadian Grand Prix, I think. Then you'll be rewinding it and rewinding it. It's a great voice. Shackler feet. I don't remember seeing that picture before, but obviously I have. He had a big career-ending accident at the British Grand Prix this year. 1986, René Arnoux kept racing longer than he should have. He was a very good driver in the early 80s, late 80s, not so much. But he was great in the early 80s. Gerhard Berger. Alan Jones, 1980 world champion. It's good old Martin Brundle. In his third year in Formula One. Patrick Tombay and Teddy Mayer, who owned McLaren before Ron Dennis. Oh, there's a picture there, actually, of Teo Fabi. Two pole positions in 1986, I remember that. Two on the, I think they were one after another. Boom, boom. I don't know where they came from, in the Benetton. He was great. He was one of those drivers that, on his day, was a really, really fast, solid fighter. Really great driver. Problem is, he, most of the time, it wasn't his day. He couldn't keep the consistency. Derek Warwick. And the famous Brabham team. Gordon Murray, designer. Let's just flick through these a little bit. Jonathan Palmer, father of Jolien Palmer. Thierry Boots in there. Alessandro Nanini, Ivan Capelli. He was fantastic in his Leighton House March days. Um, when he went to Ferrari, I think the pressure got to him. 
and he sort of fell a bit. Nigel Mansell, he won five races this year. And um, four of them were in, a, were in a space of just five races. I think it was Belgium, Canada, France, Britain, with just the US Grand Prix in between where he came fifth. So he had four wins and a fifth in the space of five races. That shot him to the top of the championship. PK and Senna. The two Brazilian races. Elio De Angelis, Nigel Mansell's teammate at Lotus before Mansell went to Williams. He was killed this year, um, 1986, uh, not 2021, uh, in a testing accident. I think it was testing, Paul Ricard in France. Um, I think it was, apologies if, if it wasn't testing, Paul Ricard. Yeah, it was, Paul Ricard in May, testing. Mid-season testing. He was a really good driver. KK Rosberg, he was fantastic as well. Such a fighter. Not so much in his last year, 1986. He should have probably retired at the end of 85. Instead of it at the end of 86. 86 was by far and away his weakest year. Before that, he was so good. I really knew, do need to fix this book up. I'm aware that I, <laughs> I saw that damage that I hadn't seen before on the inside of the spine. I really do need to fix that. So, I think I'm going to have to... Well, actually, we're only up to the Brazilian Grand Prix. <laughs> Uh, the first race of the season. So I won't be doing the whole of the, the book in this video. Um, I loved the fact that the, every year the championship started in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. Love, love that circuit. Since 1990, it's been at uh, Interlagos circuit in Sao Paulo. But throughout the 80s, the Rio race, always the first race of the season, so exciting. That McLaren, gorgeous car. Definitely the best looking car won the championship that year. And I love these charts, or well, I used to more so when I was younger. Everything on there, all the practice times, grids. I loved statistics, and nowadays, if you want a statistic, you just get your phone out of your pocket. Back then, this is how you got your statistics from having a book like this, which you hoped was accurate. PK won the race. I remember, didn't, yeah, I think Mansell had a, got tapped at the first corner trying to overtake Senna. Senna survived, came second. Mansell retired straight away. First lap, boom, gone. He went to overtake Senna, I think, for the lead. God, the Brazilian fans must have loved that. Um, Nigel Mansell ended up in the gravel. Or, I don't think it was gravel actually, I think it just ended up on the grass next to the track. Oh, Spanish Grand Prix. Maybe.
maybe I'll just do this one before I end the video. That's Michele Alboreto there. This was a very exciting race. I've watched it many times since. The race was won by Etten Senna in basically what was a photo finish. They had to check the cameras afterwards to make sure that he had indeed beaten Mansell because they crossed the line like that. Apparently the start finish line had been moved backwards from where it normally is uh, for that race. Had they had it in its normal place, Mansell would have won. Got the extra three points for the win, which would have made him finish one point ahead of Prost in the championship at the end of the year. <laughs> Obviously one race doesn't <clears throat> dictate a championship, but still. Mansell changed onto fresh tyres, came charging back up the field. Blew past Prost and then closed in on Senna. It was miles behind, but he was on fresh wet rubber. Senna was on much older rubber, so he was never going to be able to stop Mansell catching him. And he just got across the line, just ahead. That was amazing, that was. Great picture. Uh, who have you got here? Over here you've got Rosberg. That's, it's a white number on the front of his car, not red. So that's obviously the white six of Rosberg. And then behind you've got... Unfortunately for Rosberg, I'm going to guess that that's Prost in front of Rosberg. Knowing the year that Rosberg had. Don't know what the other car behind is. Looks white, could be a Brabham. That must be Mansell. That's... That's probably Senna, I think. That looks like that's a Ferrari. That must be early on in the race. But it's a it's a great picture. It really is a good picture. Jackie Stewart, Ken Tyrrell. Green dresses, yellow blue, flowers in the hair, all that business. Some of these cars in 1986 were pretty ugly looking. I think this is the exact speed, I think. That's the Lola, I think. Pretty Pretty ugly cars. The Ferrari wasn't too bad. I like the slope at the top there. And there you see it in the center. Um, one by point. Uh, 0 0.14 of a second. It's um, 0 0 0.014 of a second. That's what I meant to say. 0 0.014 of a second. He beat Nigel Mansell. Which is amazing. And Senna was then leading the championship because he'd been second in the first race. San Marino Grand Prix. This is where I will uh, end the video, I think. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching.